sky and see some neat stuff. I saw some pretty cool stuff last night, and I, maybe I'll tell you about it later if you stick around. Anyway, we are going to be joined later by uh, our own Marcy Curran, who is Earth Sky's voice of the night. She is uh, going to be with us in just a minute. But first, a pause for our sponsor, which is Earth Sky. We're sponsoring ourselves. We don't really have a sponsor. But what we do have are these really cool year-long lunar calendars that are beautifully put together as you can see they're fit for framing they're great gifts holidays are coming up if you do that kind of thing anyway you can find these and a lot of other earth sky style stuff at the earth sky store and you'll find that by visiting earthsky.org anyway with that out of the way we can welcome in marcy marcy come on in are you back there waiting there she is. Hi, Marcy. Hi, Dave. How are you today? I am good, thank you. How are you? I am well. I am well and enjoying another beautiful day here in sunny California, though it might cloud up. It might cloud up. Anyway. I, I don't mean so. It's cold and windy. Oh, uh, well, you know, tis the season. Tis the season. I'm looking forward to a little bit of cooler weather, and it's coming for us tomorrow, I think. At least yeah. that's what the weatherman says. You know how trustworthy they are. Pretty trustworthy. Anyway, on with the show. What are we doing today, Mars? All Tell right. Us. Well, starting tomorrow, we've got the last supermoon of 2024. It's yep. the fourth of four in a row. And it's the super beaver moon. It'll super be, beaver moon. Right. It'll be <laughs> reach the moment of to total full moon at ah. 329 Central Time tomorrow. Is that p.m. or a.m.? Um, p.m. P.m. So tomorrow yeah. afternoon. So by the time that it's coming up at night, it will already have reached, you know, a full stage from some locations. Mm -hmm. But again, it looks full tonight and tomorrow night as well. So be sure yeah. to get out there and see that super moon. Uh, just kind of a note, super moons don't necessarily look bigger to the eye, but uh, they look about 14% brighter than an average mm -hmm. full moon. They so sure do. And they'll catch your eye they're very pretty you know what and that's one of the observes observations the observes one of the observations that i serendipitously made last night was i woke up in the middle of the night i w headed to the kitchen for a glass of water and i thought wow well, is it is the sun coming up already no it's the super moon super moon was coming in through the skylights and it fooled me it was that bright folks so definitely go out and have a look at very the fourth and final final super moon of the series right very nice it was it was really it was it was surprising i was caught unawares the moon was that bright right and our next slide should be the one where it's very close to the pleiades star cluster tonight if you want to yes it is so close to the pleiades in some locations the moon will actually pass in front of some of the stars of the pleiades the problem is there's going to be a vast difference in brightness. So you probably need to use binoculars. Yes, really. And if you have a stargazing app or go to stellarium.org and put in your own location, you can actually see and estimate the time that it, the moon's going to start moving in front of some of the stars of the Pleiades star cluster. And well, that I is got that. So I'm really I would cool to see. Yeah, it is. that is. It is. And of wow. course, you'll notice we've got bright Jupiter is very near the moon and the Pleiades. We do. It's right down well, there on the horizon. Yeah. So the interesting thing about the moon, full moon, it rises opposite the sunset. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to see it basically opposite the sunset. It'll be highest in the sky at midnight. And then anyone up in the morning or driving to work, um, look to your horizon opposite the sunrise and you'll see that big, bright, shiny moon even in morning twilight. You sure will. You sure right. will. It's very bright. Very bright. Are we ready for another slide? Yes. Slide on to the next slide. Oh, now what down do we got near, here? Down near Jupiter, you're going to notice a bright orangish star, and that is Aldebaran, which mm -hmm. is the eye of Taurus the bull. And if you, again, you know, you've got that bright moon there, you may not see this, but um, Aldebaran is also in an open star cluster called the Hyades. And it's kind of a B-shaped pattern, basically. And Aldebaran is 
not a member of that cluster. It's kind of a foreground star. But again, that is all the face of Taurus the bull, the Hyades with um, Aldebaran being the eye of the bull. Now, I did actually observe this last night as well. I went out to watch the the uh, SpaceX launch. Oh, it's nice! Really, did you get to yeah, see I can it? see them from my I can see them from my driveway. Wow! And yeah, I know that is kind of cool, isn't it? Very and cool. um, so I was watching that, and the bright moon was up over to the east coming or was it where was it where was the bright moon anyway yes it was in the east coming up and there were, yeah there was jupiter and there was aldebaran and it was it was difficult i could see a couple maybe three of the brighter stars in the hyades but the the moon had had really washed them com almost completely out but aldebaran was bright and obvious and so it was kind of fun to see how many hyades i could you know how many of those can i see despite right. the moon but that well, SpaceX launch was something else. <laughs> and one of the cool things about following um, the moon, um, we have charts throughout the month that shows you a bright star or a planet by the moon. Mm -hmm. Is that it's a good way to learn the sky. It and really like is. tonight, when the super moon is so bright by the Pleiades and the Hyades, you're not going to see them. But it kind of gives you a reference, and you can go back after the moon has moved on, and like, oh, I see them now. So it's a good way to learn the sky is follow the moon. It sure is. And especially since you'll know where you, you know, go out tonight, find out Deboron. And you know that Deboron, the Hyades, that's right near the Pleiades. They're in the same in the same constellation of Taurus. So, you know, get yourself oriented, by, folks, and off you go. You start surfing through the sky. Okay. Right. Are we ready for another slide, Marcy? Yes. Okay. Yes. Ooh, you got two slides on this one. Tell me. Now, Tell this me, is me. something to look for after sunset. Um, uh -huh. You can't miss Venus. It's it's super bright. Um, now that daylight savings time has taken effect, you can actually see it in a dark sky before it sets true. So you cannot miss Venus. So these charts are showing the position of Venus, uh, both okay. from the northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere. And then you can use that to try to spot the elusive but bright planet Mercury. Uh, Mercury is going to be the farthest from the sun on the 16th, and then it will brighten a little bit, but disappear pretty quickly towards the end of the month. Okay, but, so that looks like you should be doing that on Saturday, maybe. The 16th would right. probably be the furthest that Mercury will be right. along, and that's when it will be closest to right. Venus. And since it brightens a little bit afterwards, and it, it's funny because it is really a bright star. It, 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 it starlight Fine. object, you know, it is easy to yeah. spot, but you've got to have the clear horizon. It's going to be in twilight. And sometimes mm -hmm. you might actually use binoculars to help you find it first and then take your binoculars down like, oh, there it is. Binoculars you know, it are is, really it useful. still in twilight, but it's bright. So, you know, if you've it never is. caught the elusive planet Mercury, maybe, you know, the next couple of weeks is your chance. Yeah, add it to your list. Yes. I remember the first time I saw it, I was actually driving down Highway 99, which goes through the center of California and looking back and forth over at the Western Horizon, which was making my wife very nervous. <laughs> anyway, so maybe don't don't do astronomy and drive at the same time. Friends don't let friends drive and do astronomy. Anyway, what else is there to tell us about these uh, these charts. Did we cover everything? So we've got a southern hemisphere. You want to look in the evening uh, on the 1st through the 16th. So right now, tonight, and same thing in the northern hemisphere. And find right. Venus, and you'll find Mercury. That sum right. it up pretty well. Yes, it does. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. And our next slide is... And we have oh. um, a very famous meteor shower, um, probably the best um, on the morning of the 18th. Uh, you can look on the morning of the 17th before. It's the Leonid meteor shower. Right. Um, you can find the sickle of Leo there. That it looks like the little backward question mark that mm -hmm. kind of stands out. And um, that is where that area of the sky just you don't have to look specifically at the radiant to see meteors just kind of watch the whole general sky watching for them so mm -hmm. you are competing again with the bright super moon right. so um, some observing tricks are to find a way to get in the moon shadow 
Uh, so basically, if you're in a spot where you can see the shadow of the moon on the ground, you know, you're you're going to be kind of washed out. But, you know, if you can get in the shadow of the moon or block it out, then you have a better chance of seeing meteors. A uh, kind of, kind of, couple of interesting facts about the lean is uh, sometimes it's it averages maybe every 33 years. They have like a storm. Yes. Um, in the 1866, uh, there was one that w- they just had thousands and thousands of meteors that apparently woke people up at night. It looked like rain. It was so intense. And then they had another one in 1966, where in about 15 minutes, there was like thousands of meteors per minute. So, you know, you're not always going to see that a lot of no. times. At best, under ideal conditions, you might see 10 or 15, you know, Leonids an hour. But, you know, the the thing about meteor showers and like Aurora or a comet, they're very unpredictable. You never know. know. If you don't go look, you never know. You You might might regret it. You might miss that meteor storm of the century, you know. Right. 2003 was not supposed to be a huge year for the Leonids, but I went up into Sequoia National Park anyway, and it paid off. I hit solid gold, solid gold. We were getting five meteors a second. They were coming in groups, leaving distinct ionized trails with lots of colors. Oh, reds and greens and blues. And wow, what a night. I will never forget that night. And yeah. you can have one of those nights too. So go out and look at this stuff, folks. This is amazing. I mean, you will, you, it's the greatest show above the earth. I think. Right. No, it'll <laughs> be best before dawn. Cause that's right. when the, the, that radiant, uh, the spot, the meteors come from will be highest in the sky, mm-hmm. but it's always worth getting up and taking a peek. It sure is. And so the way that works is that you can think of 2 AM local time as being the earth's windshield. And what I mean by that is we're going around the sun and as we rotate on our axis, we present the face of 2 a.m. So the zenith at 2 a.m. is going directly along the path of our orbit, which means that's when you're going to see the most meteors from whatever showers are available. Yeah, it's kind of similar to like you're driving into a bunch of gut bugs then, you know, that get you yeah. ready. It's the best time to see them. Although earth grazers at night are pretty cool to see. Oh, aren't they? Like low wow. and slow and you're like, what is that? You know, but any meteor is cool to see. Yeah, we, we saw one. We were driving the other night and there was a nice low, slow one and shout it out. I got to see it because it was that slow. And we're good. You know, speaking of driving and windshields, you can continue that bug splat analogy. So when you're driving, when, when the bugs are hitting the windshield, they're going to get a lot of them splat. They're going to be short streaks, poor little guys. But when they hit the side of your car, they leave a long, slow streak. And so that's essentially what's going on with a meteor when it comes in. And you got to remember, these are pieces of a comet that sort of fell off as it went along. And so this is the consistency of like wood ash. You know, this is we're not talking about solid things here. And they're very small, size of a grain of rice on average. So anyway, they are sure pretty to see. Oh, my goodness. So pretty, so pretty. You won't see a better show in the night sky. I guarantee it. But it's not always a guarantee. So nope. if you, if you don't go, you might miss the show of the century. Now, what are we seeing here? Because this is yeah. the neatest thing I think so this, far. This, <laughs> this kind what of a background. It, yeah, this is kind of a background story. My husband takes a lot of astral photos, and we just this summer had a house built north of town, getting our observatory built, and we put a little all sky camera out here on the prairie it's connected to an ethernet cord from the house it's just sitting on the prairie and well, uh, how you, that's how you do when you're a pioneer right but this <laughs> is showing you a leonid uh this was actually taken um on the morning of the 11th oh early leonid very yes. nice and you can see just kind of that backward question mark you sure can the head of leo but uh, this lens only covers, uh, it covers roughly 180 degrees of the sky. It's a 2.1 millimeter, so very small. You can see Orion at the bottom. Um, that bright right. star to its upper right is Jupiter. Mm-hmm. You can see Sirius, you know, from the belt stars going down. But yeah, the All Sky camera caught this uh, Leonid. So again, that shows you they're active. So get out they there. Are and and that reminds me of the saying, you know, you, you know, you're, you know, it's Leonid season when you have a high flying lion and a low lion Orion. 
So Orion is going to be low and Leo will be high. So we have the low, low lion Orion and a high flying lion. Yeah, you can see the big dipper right there at the top. You sure can. You sure can. No, it's, a, it's the most fun toy I think either of us have ever had. This is, this is great. This is great. And I've enjoyed logging on to your website and having a look occasionally. Yep. And so maybe we'll get to share more of that in the future. We'll see. This is a this is a fun fun thing for you guys. And you have your own observatory out there. I'm jealous. It's getting there. <laughs> the roof rolls off now. Progress, progress. It looks good. Okay, Marcy, does that about wrap it up for us today? Um, I think it does. I think you it know, does. Too. There's always a chance. Um, they were speculating we might have some uh, aurora this weekend, but again, that's very yeah. unpredictable too. So, if you're out there looking, you might enjoy um, that show too. You might, and you know what? It's always worth it to go out and have a look. I almost didn't go last night to look at the at the Falcon Nine launch. They were putting a group of starlings up, but I said, you know, I'll do it. And I was looking, you know, I watch it on my computer. It's the most amazing thing. Oh, look, a, a rocket is launching. I think I'll go outside and watch that happen now. And it looked like a kid's drawing of a comet, you know, all orange and shooting stuff out the back and moving fast across the sky. It looked just like that. And we, we, we have some haze and some, you know, there's some aerosol in the, in the atmosphere right now because we have a, I think we have a storm coming. I'm not sure. But anyway, it was just brilliantly orange and streaking across the sky. Most amazing thing. And then I got to see the moon and Aldebaran and Jupiter and all of the other neat stuff that you can go out and see this weekend, thanks to Marcy here, and her vast, vast knowledge of the night sky. You really are a great resource, Marcy. We appreciate you here. I, I love astronomy. I had a student accuse me one time. I said everything was my favorite because <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. It is my favorite. And every one of these events is a once in a lifetime, never going to happen again thing. So go out and see them. Put it on your list. And speaking of once a year things, we have the Earth Sky Calendar. There it is. It's, it's really a nice piece to have in your home. I suggest you buy several and hand them out as gifts. Thanks again for joining us. Uh, we will be back, or rather Debbie Bird, Deborah Bird, will be back tomorrow with the Sun News, and that's at 12.15 Central Time, which is 18.15 Universal Time. And then on Monday, the 18th, I'll be back here to talk to Stacy McGaugh, who is a professor at Case Western Reserve University, and he's just had a look at the new data from the James Webb Space Telescope, and we have a problem in our cosmology. It might be that we need to rethink cold, dark matter. Anyway, we'll be talking about that on Monday. You can get the details. And I think on Tuesday, is it Tuesday, or Tuesday, Marcy, the 19th, ah, we have another observing stream coming up. So you know what you better do? You better like, you better subscribe, and you better check down below and see what we've got coming. Thank you so much for joining us, folks. Remember, there's only one Earth, one sky, Earth sky. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Marcy. Thanks. Are we clear, Cameron?